once you've connected your app to a data source, you'll want to build functionality into your app that allows your users to choose what data they want to see. You can easily develop this with Thunkable's no-code, drag-and-drop block technology. Think of a user interface or front-end design as the exterior of a car, the data source connection as the fuel, and the blocks as the engine that powers the car. In this short video, we'll hop into the Blocks tab and develop the functionality of our Employee Directory app and define its behaviors. Follow along and complete the steps in your own Thunkable project and you'll have developed an impressive first app with Thunkable. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to initialize an app variable, organize app data with objects, program an app to navigate between screens, map content from a data source to app components, and duplicate blocks. Let's get to it. We've been working on an employee directory app throughout this course. So far, we have one functioning button, we've designed the app's user interface, and we've connected it to a data source. Now we need to develop the functionality for the remainder of the app. Here's what we need to accomplish. When a user taps on an employee entry on the team screen, take them to the employee profile screen. On the employee profile screen, populate each of the following fields with the selected employee's details from the data source name, preferred pronouns, photo, email, department, title, location, and fun fact. Now that we know what we need to achieve, let's get to work. Click to navigate to the Blocks tab and ensure you're building on the Teams screen. If you're brand new to Thunkable, you may feel as though this section moves a little quickly. Feel free to change the playback speed, pause, and even rewatch portions if you need to. According to app building best practices, it's not efficient to create a new screen for each new employee. If you did that, you'd have to add a new screen every time you add a new employee. The goal is to have one screen that pulls specific information from a database when needed. That's why we've connected our app to a data source where the information lives. Now we just need to tell our app what data to pull from our spreadsheet and where to place it. When we're done, the employee profile screen will display data from the data source that will vary depending on which employee on the team screen is tapped. To do that, we use variables. We'll dig into variables in more detail in a future course, but for now, all you need to know is that in programming, variables act as a placeholder for values that can change or vary depending on circumstances. Click variables in the menu on the left and drag the initialize app variable name to block into your workspace. This variable will be an object that contains all of the data in the row associated with the employee that is clicked on. So let's rename it to employee row object. Next, click objects and drag and drop the create object block and connect it to the initialize variable block. We will use this variable a little later to store each selected employee's name, department, location, etc. Now that the variable is initialized for the app, let's tell it where to pull the data from. Let's walk through how to build this block combination and then break down what it actually means. Click on the data viewer list in the component tree and drag the when data viewer list item click block into your workspace. This event block comes with the row ID parameter to indicate which row in the data viewer was clicked. Click variables, drag the set variable to block and nest it within the data viewer list block you just added. Under app features, click data source, Drag the get row object from block and connect it to the set variable to block. Click the mint green row ID block above and drag to replace the default light pink ID block. Now click control and drag the navigate to block and stack it underneath the orange set variable to block. From the drop down menu, select the screen you want the user to navigate to. Okay, let's translate what this all means. When an item in the data viewer list, in our case an employee, is tapped, the app variable will store the data contained in that employee's row in sheet one of the Thunkable employee directory spreadsheet. In addition, the user will be taken to the employee profile screen. Great, so now the app knows what data to retrieve from where, but it doesn't know what to do with it. Let's move over to the employee profile screen and add directions. Click the screen's name in the component tree and drag the When Screen Employee Profile Opens block into your workspace. We'll use this block to tell the app where to put the content it's stored in the variable. Let's start with the employee name at the top of the screen. Click Label Employee Name to access the block specific to this component. Drag the Set Label Employee Name block and drop it within the block we just added. 
Now click Objects and drag the Get Property of Object block and connect it to the dark green block. Within the pink object block, change the default text of property name to the column name from the spreadsheet, so in this case, employee name. When manually typing property names, ensure the spelling and spacing is an exact match to your data source's column headers. Lastly, we need to identify where the data is stored, so click Variables and drag the block with only the name of the variable as the block's missing piece. What we've just built should do the following. When the user taps the name of an employee in the data viewer list on the team screen, it triggers the employee profile screen to open. When the employee profile screen opens, the app will call the variable for the selected employee's row in the connected spreadsheet and set the employee name label to the text in the spreadsheet's employee name column. Let's test it. Click the team screen and then click the web preview button. When we click the name of one of the employees, the screen changes to the employee profile screen and the employee's name will populate at the top. Ta-da! Success! Okay, now we've populated one of our fields, let's move on to those that are remaining. Click back to editing and click to build on the employee profile screen. We can make the process of replicating similar actions easier by duplicating blocks. Check it out. Right click on the dark green block and select duplicate. Click the drop down to select the pronoun label and change the employee name property to the pronoun column header, preferred pronouns. Now drag and stack it under the employee name block. Voila, preferred pronouns complete. Repeat the same process for the email. Right click and duplicate. Label employee email. Property, email. For the image, let's look at an alternative way to duplicate blocks. Click on any of the dark green blocks and use keyboard shortcuts to copy and paste it. From here, the process is the same. Select Image, Employee Photo. You'll notice the default content type changes from text to picture. Change the property to the spreadsheet column header Photo and you're done. There are four additional fields we need to populate on the Employee Profile screen. Department, Title, Location, and Fun Fact. Let's turn up the tunes and add the blocks for each of those remaining fields. With all of the screens complete, let's test it again. Click the team screen and then click the web preview button. There you have it, an app that allows users to view data from a data source. And with that, you've just built your first app with Thunkable. Congratulations. You can now call yourself an app builder. And don't forget to check it out on your own device with the Thunkable Live app. Click the Live Test on Device button and open your Thunkable Live app on your device to see your app in action in the palm of your hand. Here's a quick summary of all the things you're now able to do. Initialize an app variable. Organize app data with objects. Program an app to navigate between screens. Map content from a data source to app components. And duplicate blocks. Thanks for tuning in for how to make a Thunkable app interactive with blocks the final video in our How to Build Your First App with Thunkable course. Give yourself a pat on the back for building a Thunkable directory app, and then be sure to check out our other Thunkable Academy courses to keep that momentum going. And remember, if you can think it, you can thunk it.